So all of these have the same elemental composition as organic molecules. So here we, in methane we have carbon and hydrogen. This is an organic molecule. So methane is an organic molecule. Okay. What about carbon dioxide? We have carbon and oxygen. But I'm going to tell you that this is inorganic, not an organic molecule. Okay. All right, what about this? This has carbon and oxygen and hydrogen. Surely this has to be organic, right? Nope. This is also inorganic. Hmm, okay. What about forming acid? It looks a heck of a lot like carbonic acid. Is this organic or is it inorganic? Well, formic acid is considered an organic molecule. Now, you may wonder, well, how can you tell the difference then between an organic and inorganic molecule? All of these molecules have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Some of them are organic and some of them are inorganic. What's the difference? Well, the key difference then is you have to look at what is bonded to carbon or what is sharing electrons with carbon. In organic molecules, you have at least one of these. You have carbon bonding with carbon or carbon bonding with hydrogen. In inorganic molecules, carbon bonds only with oxygen. Okay. Why should this make a difference? This makes a difference because when carbon is bonded to oxygen, remember oxygen is much more electronegative than carbon, and the electrons are all pretty much being hogged by the oxygen atoms. Okay. In this state, with this carbon here is what we call oxidized. Okay. So when carbon is completely oxidized, we say that that carbon is inorganic. Carbon that has, is, has bonds with other carbons or uh, with hydrogens are uh, either reduced or we can say is at least not fully oxidized. We will talk more about redox reactions, but for now, the important point is that this represents different energy levels for carbon. A fully oxidized carbon molecule has no available energy. There is no chemical energy in a fully oxidized carbon um, atom that can be exploited by living organisms, whereas a carbon molecule in its reduced form, or carbon atoms in their reduced form, have chemical potential energy that can be used by cells and, uh, as, uh, as an energy source, and also for further reactions with carbon. So this leads to the statement by one Sean Carroll, an astrophysicist, that the purpose of life is to hydrogenate carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is inorganic. By attaching hydrogens to the carbon and carbon dioxide, you turn living cells, or actually photosynthesis then, converts inorganic carbon to organic carbon. And that really is, in one way, the purpose of life.